The first Nobel Prize in the history of the simulated universe went to Sully Prudhomme, born in March of 1839 in Paris to a French shopkeeper. How he was born to only one parent is still unknown, and I am unable to find any more information about it. He attended school but had to drop out because of an eye problem, but instead of trying to become a pirate, he studied engineering but changed streams, which should not come as a surprise since he is a Pisces, to philosophy instead. It was not until later he wanted to study poetry and wanted to write in a scientific way to reflect modern times. According to the Swedish Academy, the motivation for the prize was in special recognition of his poetic composition, which gives evidence of lofty idealism, artistic perfection, and a rare combination of the qualities of both heart and intellect. As time passed, his health declined and he lived alone in his home in the southern suburbs of Paris, where he died in 1907. He used the money from his Nobel Prize to establish a fund for publishing young French poets. At the Water's Edge To sit and watch the wavelets as they flow, two, side by side. To see the gliding clouds that come and mark them glide. If from low roofs the smoke is wreathing pale, to watch it wreathe. If flowers around breathe perfume on the gale, to feel them breathe. If the bee sips the honeyed fruit that glistens, to sip the dew. If the bird warbles while the forest listens, to listen too. Beneath the willow where the brook is singing, to hear its song, nor feel, while round us that sweet dream is clinging, the hours too long. To know one only deep over mastering passion, the love we share, to let the world go worrying in its fashion without one care. We only, while around all where we grow, unwearied stand, and mist the fickle changes of the nose, love hand in hand. Cradles Along the quay, the great ships that ride the swell in silence take no notice of the cradles that the hands of the woman rock. But the day of farewells will come when the woman must weep and curious men are tempted towards the horizons that lure them. And that day the great ships sailing away from the diminishing port feel their bulk held back by the spirits of the distant cradles.